Dread is a 2012 action film directed by Pete Travis and written by Alex Garland. Judge Dredd, a law enforcement agent of the police state Mega City One, is tasked with testing Anderson, a mutant psychic who wants to be a street judge. While investigating a multiple homicide, they encounter Mama, the crime boss of a powerful drug empire. Locked inside peach trees, a housing complex, and Mama's home base, Dredd and Anderson must fight their way to Mama and escape alive. Purely as an action film, it's excellent. Incredible tension, design, and visuals. If gritty modern media is sometimes called grim dark, then Dread is grim bright, showcasing brilliant flashes of reds, pinks, and yellows throughout the film. Also, frankly, the action genre has been inundated with so many PG-13 movies that seeing a rated R Dread is a nice shot in the arm. In addition to this, Dread follows the tradition of using the thrills of an action movie to tell a meaningful story about the pitfalls of modern society, much in the same way that films like Robocop and Starship Troopers did in years past. If film is visual art, then the action genre, which emphasizes storytelling through motion, has the potential to not only be exciting, but also profound. American audiences have sometimes misunderstood the original comic book character and later adapted iterations to be a heroic figure standing in the face of crime, but Judge Dredd is meant to be satirical commentary on frightening attitudes about crime and punishment. And although Dredd is a British-created character, he is meant to be closer to a personification of American popular media and politics. Bear this in mind as we go forward. Judge Dredd is historically a character used to criticize how we deal with crime. Some would prefer Dredd the film to just be incredible action with no real substance or message, and that's fine, but screenwriter Alex Garland, known for writing such films as 28 Days Later, Sunshine, and Ex Machina, obviously has a great understanding of why the character of Judge Dredd exists and the potential for his world as meaningful commentary. Historically, we are not meant to think of Dredd as a hero, at least not in the traditional sense. We are meant to see him as either a fascist or a man mistakenly aiding a fascist society. Dredd is the living embodiment of a failed system of justice, one that punishes instead of rehabilitates, and focuses on crime after it happens rather than prevention by creating a better quality of life so that many may need not turn to crime in the first place. If we treat people like animals, then they'll begin to behave like animals. Out of control crime is not simply a moral failing, it's a failing of the state. In Dread, we explore this countless times, with everything from the short-sightedness of the judge's actions to police brutality. Let's look at some basic examples. When Anderson and Dredd find a homeless man near the doorway to peach trees, they tell him to leave, and the only reason they don't arrest him is because Mama's homicides take precedent. But here's a question. Where do they expect this man to go? They don't recommend a homeless shelter or any alternative. His sign says he will debase himself for money. When Dredd sees him again, he attempts to arrest him before the old man suddenly dies. The judge's solution to the homeless problem is throwing them in what must be overcrowded jails. So does the martial law police army of judges make a difference? No. If their ultra-violent, questionable methods actually showed results, we could have a moral argument about whether or not it's worth it. But Dredd himself admits that the current system of justice can only respond to 6% of emergencies. Of those 6%, one must assume that some don't have a positive result for the judges. So realistically, the future system of justice probably stops even less than that. In other words, their system does not work. That has always been the contention of Judge Dredd's stories. We can respond to around 6%. Which 6%? Your show, rookie. You tell me. The galling thing about Dredd is that he doesn't see the consequences of his actions on a wider scale. Killing Mama won't end the drug trade. One might say that it's still a small victory, but actually, it will almost certainly make things worse. Early in the film, it was said that there was a gang war among the four major factions. Mama took over, which ended intergang violence. Now that she's dead, there's a power vacuum, which means another war. One that may not end. One that will almost surely take innocent bystanders along with it. Mama's death will likely be the catalyst to even greater violence. I don't think it's controversial anymore to say that, in the real America, the war on drugs didn't work. And in this film, we see the eventual result, 
a situation getting worse and worse the more militarized the fictional America became in drug enforcement and how little it concerns itself with rehabilitation and treatment. Let's look at some of the circumstances that may have led to the crimes in this film and how the judges reacted to them. Anderson is ordered to execute a man, but who is this man and what led him down this path? Well, he's a family man who apparently took a job with Mama to support his wife and child. Naturally, our reaction to this is blaming the man because he shouldn't have become a criminal. But did he really have a choice? Anderson and Dredd say that the residents of the neighborhood have a 90% unemployment rate. There are no jobs to be had. Also, it is explicitly said that judges almost never come there. So, no jobs and no law enforcement to protect against the gangs. The judge's police state is one in which he can't legally work. The only other option is to let his family starve to death. What is his greater responsibility? To the law that does not protect him, or to his loved ones? And because he is given no choice but to become a criminal or let both he and his family die, he is executed without a trial by the same justice system that created the situation in the first place. It's an inescapable, paradoxical situation. The film expressly condemns this system by showing Anderson rebel against it and Dredd eventually pass her on her evaluation, a concession that suggests he knows he might have been wrong. I know there are good people inside, good families just trying to get by. Yes, I believe I can make a difference. We've been conditioned to like movie characters who break the rules to get results, but in the real world, the consequences of a loose cannon police officer is corruption, brutality, and riots. Moving on, gender implicitly becomes an issue in the film. Both Anderson and Mama are women in male-dominated fields, those being law enforcement and criminal empires, not to mention the fact that Dredd's superior judge is a woman. It should be noted that Dredd, for all his seeming attributes that some might describe as toxic masculinity, violent, uncompromising, he takes no issue with being ordered by a woman in his field or being partnered with a woman. He treats Anderson as a rookie, but her gender never comes up, at least not to him. Similarly, Mama's gender is never brought up by her underlings, with the exception being her gendered name. They respect her, even fear her. You're a piece of work, Dredd. But then so am I. While the fact that both major women characters have some connection with sexual violence may be troubling and problematic for any feminist reading, it should be noted that neither character showcase harmful stereotyping. Anderson is put in peril, but she is not a damsel in distress. She outsmarts her captor and rescues herself. Both Dredd and Anderson are in danger in the film, but they are both able to help each other. Anderson even saves Dredd's life by gunning down a corrupt judge. Mama is brutal, but her brutality is not gendered. She's not a witch, or a seductress, or some other classically feminine villain. At the end of the film, Dredd finds his way into Mama's lair. They stare each other down, and Mama has no delusions about who she is, but believes Dredd, behind his mask, thinks himself greater than he actually is. Something more than a foot soldier of a fascist regime. This may seem like the classic cliché of the villain telling the hero, we're not so different, you and I, but the film actively lets us know that Dredd's actions mirror those of Mama's. Both Dredd and Mama brutalize the criminals inside peach trees, and Dredd kills his enemies by throwing them several stories down, like Mama did in the beginning of the film. This is more than just some sick form of poetic justice. This is deliberate mirroring of Dredd's tactics with those of Mama. She a pass or a fail? She's a pass. But in the end, Dredd's unflinching trust in the system has been shattered. He met corrupt judges, and he learned, through Anderson, that the law and justice are not exactly the same. The screenwriter compared Judge Dredd's arc with that of a glacier, little by little. This grants Dredd a kind of humanity, and makes the film not about a fascist hero, but about the potential for heroism in the face of fascism. <laughs>